Good morning, welcome to the homestead. This week's project is to install a wood stove in the tiny timber frame. The wood stove we bought last year came with four feet. They are not attached and they are not all the same size. So today's project is going to be grind down some steel that we found in the back 40 or the back, uh, whatever you'd call it, back behind the shed in the uh, repository of junk. We're gonna grind down some of that metal, drill some new holes and mount these feet to a plate, put that on the bottom of the wood stove to keep it up off the ground. We have cut some steel and ground it flat and are ready to get welding. We have safety gear, very important to have a fire extinguisher nearby when you're welding, and also uh, <clears throat> heavy duty clothing. So let's get started. All right, the feet are in beneath the stove. <clears throat> Three things left to do. One, put in our chimney. Two, we have to build a um, non-combustible tile base. And uh, the last thing is we're gonna build a surround here. It's gonna be basically one layer of a non-combustible cement board and another layer of corrugated steel. Oh. Where are we going? I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> we're going apple picking. That's right. Apple picking? Apple picking. Apple picking? Oh, you're a chicken. You don't care. Didn't you already ask me about apples? I did, but you weren't that excited before. I want you to be Well, more. I clapped three times. <laughs> How many buckets did we bring? We brought six buckets and four produce boxes. We're very ambitious. So, yeah, I'm Come afraid on, we might actually bring home that many apples. It's okay, because you have a cider press, right? I can make a cider press. Well, don't you already have... Most of us we'll probably press? like eat that many apples, so we're gonna need to go back to get apples to process, right? I think we'll be, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> I mean, we'll get through it all. Apples we'll last I'll a long time. I'll actually eat some of the apples. I haven't really eaten any of the pears. What's wrong with you? Yeah, pears are so good. Pears are so good. Which is better, apples, apples. or pears? Apples. Apples or pears? Which is the best? Apples. 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 See, Everybody? it's unanimous. Overall, apples, but occasionally pears. I think I have changed my opinion about apples versus pears because I've been eating some really good pears. And so uh, just the other day I said, I think I might like pears better. Is it possible? We have some friends from the farmer's market who we mentioned before who let us pick a ton of pears, um, a couple hundred pounds of pears. Today they've invited us to pick apples at a different property that they own and they have a bunch of apple trees and can't process them yet. So that's where we're going. We're taking two vehicles and the whole family. You have to choose apples or pears. Which is your favorite? Um, apples. Only, I mean, here's what I'll say. I don't love apples. I don't love pears either. Um, I don't choose to just like, hey, I want a piece of fruit. Let me eat an apple or a pear. Um, but made into stuff like apple pie filling or applesauce or 
things like that. I like apples better than pears, really, honestly. You know, everyone else had a one word answer. You told your life story. <laughs> Yeah, can you get it? Did you get it? Nice. I got this one. This other okay. one. Getting my scrunched up working face. Were you making a scrunched up face? Yeah. <laughs> We have a long list of things we've got to do before the weather gets cold around here. And one of the things on that list is to move our goat milking stanchion. We built this thing, oh, a long time ago. And it was one of the very first things we built when we got on the property because we got goats right away. And um, we've moved a few times. The most recent location is up on this hill, so which, is, which is really dry and nice, except it's gonna snow. And it's gonna be hard to, for the ladies to climb up this hill in the snow and the ice and also the roof leaks. So our project is going to be move it down here onto this flat section, but also we're going to take some of these uh, sections of what it used to be is the old flooring from an old trailer that we tore out, and we're going to take those sections and make a solid floor. Everything we've done so far it pretty much has an earth floor, which is fine and quick and cheap and no big deal, except uh, when it gets wet it gets really gross. This is the repository of uh, old floor planks from the trailer that we took out. I keep trying to throw them away and then I keep finding ways to use them. So they're still here. We've taken them apart and put them back together a few times. It's really stupid, but like they've been really useful for keeping us up out of the wet when the weather rolls in. And so we're gonna use them again today. How many times you move these? Mm. Okay, this is one of the ways we feed our chickens, is by growing fodder. And all that is, is we take a bunch of seeds. We have, uh, I think, einkorn. Um, I'm gonna make some guesses here. Millet. Um, the flat lentils. That's enough to, to go on. There's probably three or four others. But we soak them in these bins. And then every day, we take one out. And this one will be served tomorrow. Doesn't that look awesome? And it basically comes out as uh, sprouts for the chickens. It ends up healthier than just plain grain. Isn't that cool? Look at that. It's a lot healthier and easier for them to digest than just straight grain. And it kind of like multiplies your food supply because you're growing it. We just grow them in these little bins up here and rotate them out. Uh, add one every day, take one down every day. Just to be perfectly honest, I, I bear no responsibility for the fodder system. That's the ladies, but they didn't feel like talking on video this morning. 
So that's why I got to describe it. For the base beneath the stove, we're putting in this tile uh, tile base, which we just made by taking some like one foot tiles, breaking them into pieces and mortaring them together into a, kind of a random pattern. I think it's gonna look pretty good. We're gonna be able to get over it. Yeah. It's not. A, it's not be. It just won't be fun. We're gonna be able to do it without cutting our fingers off. If you were looking closely, you might have noticed that that stove does not have a chimney, and neither does this house. And so the next step in our process is to cut a hole in the roof and run a chimney. We've only done that once before, and it was for an unfinished building, so I'm a little nervous about doing it. I have some parts on order, which scares me enough because you never know exactly how it's all going to fit together. But that's supposed to come in the next couple of days, and we should be ready to cut that hole in that chimney. Thanks for joining us for our adventure on our homestead. We've really enjoyed having you along with us. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel and please push the bell so you get notifications when we have new content. And if you are so willing, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash deeprootsfamily. Did I say it right? Um, patreon.com slash deeprootsfamily? No. I don't know. I think that's right. See you next time. You having trouble there? <laughs> did, you, did you have to start it? I heard it go pudding. Can't get it back out now that you put it in there. Don't you know? We only put things on this channel that make us look good. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the door so we can see you better. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There we go. Now we can see your face. Yeah, we can see you. See how you're embarrassed. Just so you know who did this.